What's going on, you guys? We're back again with another video. So as LeBron James, Stephen Curry, and KD are kind of ending their prime, the league is going to be searching for the new face in the NBA. Um, we already got a lot of names just up for it, like Giannis Antetokounmpo, even though he just lost yesterday, and they're kind of killing him on the internet. But a dude that's already a top 75 player of all time, and some people top 50 to me, damn near top 30. That might be recency bias, but like he, he's just that good, already NBA champion, champion two-time MVP, um, defense player of the year. He got his. Jokic got two MVPs. He can also be a face, but he doesn't really connect with the media like that. You got guys like Luke and Tatum who connect with the media, and also a really good players is Tatum being to um, three Eastern Conference Finals in four years, an NBA uh, Finals appearance. You got Luke who going to Western Conference Finals in his fourth year, multiple All-NBA first teams. You even got guys like Ja, who just connect with the media super well, just fits the modern day NBA and it fits the media perfectly even though he went through his own struggles. But a guy that I feel like we should talk about when it comes to NBA media and being the new face of the NBA, Anthony Edwards. I would say to be a face of the NBA, you have to be a superstar type player. And while telling my friends, I was trying to find a definition for a superstar because if we're being honest, it has many definitions. Everybody has a different definition for a superstar. No matter who you talk to, it's never going to be the same definition. I would say even my definition varies every time. Like I don't even know what I'm about to say, but my definition for a superstar is just a player that steps up in the big moments, a leader, and you, they just got the it factor. And when I look at him, he just has it at a young age, which is very surprising to me because rookies that are coming in that just came in, um, sophomores that just came in, he's younger than them. And he's always, he already done way more than they ever did in the NBA. Multiple multiple playoff appearance, um, being the best player on the playoff team two years in a row, um, all-star already, damn near about to be an all-NBA guard. He just has the it factor that's super different from a lot of guys. Growing up, my idol was Kobe, and we kind of like to give this Mamba mentality thing to every guy that shows they that they work hard, which is just, it's not the it's not the truth. Not everybody is Mamba mentality. The one person I would say that actually has Mamba mentality is Russell Westbrook. No matter what obstacle you throw in front of Russ, it's not going to stop him. Not gonna stop him, not gonna stop his character, not gonna stop the way he plays. He's going to be the same person throughout the whole thing. I kind of see the same thing with Anthony Edwards. Just the eager or the hunger to want to be better at everything, want to be better than you at everything. A lot of guys don't have that. And they say they, they have it, but they don't really show you it. But I see that every time I watch Anthony Edwards that he just wants to be great. I have a video and like what their their seventh game in, the, in his second year saying he's already the second best player and that's he's on the team with D'Lo and Carthony Towns two all-star level players and I just seen it from the beginning because he's just so different he was already the leader of that team in that game he said even though this is my team basically I try my best to get at their shot I mean to get D'Lo his shots to give Cat his shots because we're going to need them to win the game and they won that game against the Bucks the Bucks that just came off a championship Stuff like that. I like to watch his interviews a lot because he's very smart for his age. I like to look at all the pre-draft reports when it comes to Anthony Edwards because a lot of the things you see about it is just not true. Like the main thing we've seen going up to him being drafted was he doesn't love the game. They compared him to freaking Dion Waiters. And I never understood that because as I'm watching him now, he wants to be great. A lot of young guys in the game say they want to be great, but they don't show it. They don't try to engrave it in your head that they want to be great. They don't have their performances show that they want to be great, but he does. And he's only 21. And that's just, to me, that's scary. And for him to already be the leader of this team that early is also a big thing. A big part of me, like giving him all this credit, just this year, he showed me some shit that's just like, bro, you're different. And I'm sorry if I'm looking down, but I'm just gonna show you what he did. Carlson and Towns went out early, very early in the season. I would say like their 15th game. And around that time, they were 10, no, it wasn't their 15th game, it was their 13th game. Um, it was against the Wizards. Around that time, they were 10 and 11. Um, it was a very disappointing start to the season. You just made a trade for Woody Goldberry. And um, they had an easy schedule to start the season. And they, they just ended up being very disappointing. But around that time, he was averaging 22.5.9 rebounds, 3.9 assists, 45% from the field, or 35% from three. Yes, those numbers are not bad, 
but for a person that actually watches Ant a lot, he wasn't having a good season. And why he was kind of catering to D Lo, he was catering to Cat, and it was just hard for him to function with having two bigs, and he really couldn't be himself. And then Cat went out, and he not only went out, he went out for a long time. Now, as much as we got a lot to say about Carl Anthony Towns, he's still one of the most talented players in the league, a top 40 player in this league, a, a former All-Star, two-time All-Star, uh, multiple All-NBAs. He's still a very great player. So losing Cat, and probably around that time, they were like the 10th or 11th seed in the Deep West. Losing him, an All-NBA talent, and you ended up being the 8th seed? Why? What happened for them to be the 8th seed? Anthony Edwards, at 21 years old, started to play at MVP level, averaged at 26.4 points, 5.8 rebounds, 4.7 assists per game, 45% from the field, and 37% from three. Yes, those numbers are not super crazy, but when you were watching in all the close games that they were in, he played at an MVP level. And he needed to do all those things because around that time, D'Lo was going at it with Rudy Gobert. They never really had enough chemistry. Um, the team was bad compared to last year. They, the whole team in itself didn't have enough chemistry. And they needed somebody to carry them through that because they don't, they're just missing to some people their best player. And what did he do at 21 years old? He put the team on his back. What did I say to you guys yesterday in my video um, about all NBA teams? This team will seem not that good. It's not that good. They gave up too many pieces for Rudy, for Rudy Gobert. Even though I think Rudy Gobert had a decent season, they gave up too much pieces for Rudy Gobert. When you compare them, this team to teams like the Mavericks or the Portland Trailblazers, those teams are kind of on the same level. But what did he do? He led his team to the play-in. He won two play Well, he lost one. He won the play-in game to get them to go against the Nuggets. And it's just like, bro, not a lot of guys have that uh, ability to carry this early in their careers. Stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a thing of being a superstar on the court and off the court. Because we'll talk about off the court later. But at this early in his age, he's showing that he's going to be one of the best talents in the league. So for him to carry his team all this way, um, if he was to have a bad playoffs, I wouldn't mind. Because mind you, also in the playing game, he fucked up his shoulder. Like landed straight on his shoulder. As you're watching Ant. Um, in the past week, you notice that he's wearing an undershirt. He normally never wears that because it's shorter. I don't know what type of technology that is that a shirt is supposed to like help the shoulder. But you know, NBA, they have many amounts of technology to help these players. But he hurt his shoulder. And you would think, all right, what, third year carry, even though he had a really good playoff last year, damn near average 30. Um, a third year carry, a third year kid having to carry the load all the way to the playoffs and then hurt his shoulder in a play in, you would think, all right, he'll have a chill series against one of the best teams in the league. No, arguably, arguably, and just listen to me. He played like the best player in that series, and that series had Carl Anthony Towns, Jamal Murray, and Nikola Jokic. And he is 21 years old, averaging 31.6 points, 5.2 rebound assists, 5.1 rebounds, 4.8% from the field, and 35% from the three. He played damn near like the best player. Shout out to Jokic. He had a great series. Shout out to Jamal Murray. He had a great series. But Anthony Edwards at times looked like the best player on that court. And it's just leading by example. I'm going to say it again. A lot of young guys are going to say they want to be leaders or they're the leaders of their team. But you don't see it in the big moments. In the big moments, two weeks before the playoffs, they're going against the Pelicans. That, that game Rudy Gobert got in a fight in. And they were getting, B.I. was dogging them the whole game. Who got a B.I. that fourth quarter? When Jalen McDaniels, Jaden McDaniels broke his hand. Anthony Edwards. And he stopped B.I. for most of that fourth quarter. Who also scored on the other side for most of that game? Anthony Edwards. Who got the block? The game-winning block. Anthony Edwards. Showing these little bits of moments this early in your career. To me, bro, he wants it. He wants it and then. The sad part was for me, seeing them fight so hard. They won game uh, four, I believe. Matter of fact, before that game, he said, I'm not getting swept. I don't want to get swept. That mindset to have this young, nobody's going to say that. No young guy cares about that. They just want to go out there and poop. But he's like, bro, I don't. I can't have getting swept on my resume. That shit, like, yo, he, he just reminds me of those guys, those all-time greats. But in, that, in, in the game four, they went to five games. 
Um, they won game four. He dogged in game four. Again, dog in game four. And in game five, he had a really good game. Um, but then they put him in late in the fourth quarter, which was kind of dumb. And then at that time, it was Cat. He was doing his thing, so they gave it to Cat. And then and hit some clutch buckets. But at the end, where they needed him, even though the play was so terrible, the inbound play was so terrible, he had a good look, and he missed it. And to see him run straight to the locker room, not dabbing up nobody. And y'all know that whole case he got now because he threw, he threw a chair at a lady. Seeing that and seeing how destroyed he was, that just showed, bro, he wanted that shit so bad. Like, he wanted to be the first team ever to come down 3-0. He wanted that shit so bad, and he left it all out on the court. And then what the fuck does he say in the post-conference? They asked him a question. I don't know the question, but I know this is exact answer. Exact answer. He said, scratch his head. He said, I don't know, man. He said, I'm just ready to get back in the gym. That early? After a heartbreaking loss like that? He has it, bro. He ha he wants to be great. A lot of young guys want to be great. I'm sorry, I'm keep saying that. A lot of guys want to be great, but he shows it in different moments, many moments. And then when we look at the off court, I think all superstar. It's on. It's an on court and off court thing. I think he has it off the court too. You see, he's already in a movie. He was a star of a movie. He wasn't the main guy in the movie, but he was a star in that movie. Now you see him in movie commercials. But I don't know what that movie's called, that little dinosaur movie that's coming up. He's in commercials like that. He has a personality that you can relate to. He's a funny guy. If you watch a lot of his interviews, you're going to like him. He's a funny guy. He's on different amount of commercials. He can be a superstar off the court and on the court. So when we're looking at the next face of the NBA, you got to talk about Anthony Edwards because you got guys like me that think he can be an all-time great. I think... In his prime, and I don't think he's nowhere near it. So for him to be damn near a top 20 player at 21 years old, he's nowhere near his prime. Oh, like, look at Luca. Luca's 23. I'm going to be honest. Luca's damn near near, like, the peak where Luca's ever going to be. And he's, like, what? Top 8 player. This nigga's top 20. 21 years old. And I'm telling you, he's nowhere near. He's nowhere near his prime. And he's already that, man, he, he's going to be an all-time great. Just with the mentality, the way he plays, the only thing that can fuck him up is the Timberwolves organization because it's a terrible organization. But, bro, he's going to be an all-time great. So, let me know how you think about this video. Shout out to y'all for watching this video. If you got this long, make sure you like and subscribe. Share with your friends. We are back with more um, more uploads. I would say, like, shit, the last two months, it's just my mind wasn't in it. I, I was just at a, a content creation block. But I'm back, man. I'm back. So, shout out to y'all. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.